Okay, in this video we're going to talk about uh, different types of data files and data formats and how you can convert a data file into a usable data structure within Python. Okay, so I have uh, some, some data files here in my desktop and if we click on this, this is just a grocery list, right? So we have uh, sort of a label, this is arbitrary. People can make grocery lists, you know, however they, they want to, right? So this person has constructed a grocery list. They went ahead and labeled it. There's this arbitrary line here that, that delineates the name of the list. And then here are the items in, in the list. All right. So let, let's take a look at how we might parse this into a usable data structure in Python. All right. So I've got this utils.py file. Okay. So uh, I'm going to add the hash bang. That's just going to let me run, uh, run this file directly with Python 3. Uh, you don't have to add this. All right, what we want to do is we want to create um, a function that will just read in this file, right? So let's create a function uh, called read file, and we'll provide it a path. And what we want to do is we want to say uh, there's a couple ways you could you could open this file. We can use both of which are going to use the open function, and you want to specify the path. And then what option? How are we opening this file? We're opening it for reading. So we pass in the second argument here as the, the single R character, right? And so we want to store this in some variable. We'll call it F. So we're going to open up this file for reading, all right? Then we, what we want to do is we want to get that data. And we could say F.read. And this is going to read in all of that data as though it were text. And store that string value in this variable data all right one thing with a file once once we've opened it we always need to remember to close it so f dot close all right so this is how we can read in some data and then I can return that data all right so I've got this nice little function here and I can test this Okay, what this does, this line of code, this name variable is built into Python, and if this file is run directly, rather than this file being imported by another program, this variable is going to be the string main. Which means, if it is the string main, I can run tests down here. So I can test this function that I just created. Right, so let's, let's run a test here. Uh, let's print, we'll say f Okay, so I like to do this. So when I'm making, this is a module, I'm gonna import this utilities module in other programs, right? So if I wanna test what I'm putting in this module, I can test it here. And then when I import this uh, read file into another program, it won't run the tests. It will only run the tests when I run utils.py uh, directly. All right, so to test this, let's uh, go ahead and call read file. And my path is grocery.txt, and I should get some data. All right. Now I'm going to, I have the change mode package installed in Atom here, which allows me to make this file executable. All right, so I'm running a Linux system, so this is how I normally execute my, my programs. So I'm going to run utils. This, this is what I mean by running it directly. Now, by changing the permissions to executable and also including this hash bang, that's why I'm able to run the command like this. If you don't do that, you'll have to run something like this on Mac or Linux. And if you're running this on Windows, you'll, you'll just do the command Python and then the name of the file. All right. But I am running it like this. And here we go, running tests for utils. So basically, what we have stored in this data variable is this entire string, all of these individual string characters, and then a new line character, all of these hyphens, and then a new line character, etc., all the way down. So we have this data. Now, this still isn't in a particularly usable form, right? Uh, what we want to do to make this usable is maybe just have the list of, of 
items, right? We don't really, we already know this is a grocery list, so we don't need these first two lines. We really want everything after that. All right. So one thing we can do is we can take this data and call strip on it. This basically strips off any white space. You can specify a character in here. If you did that, it would strip off any hyphens and it strips it from the very beginning of the string and the very end of the string. And that's the only places it strips off the data. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna take this, but you see how we have this additional new line at the end that's considered white space. So that's that blank line, it's gonna strip that off. So that's something I commonly do. Uh, whenever I read read data in, right? Um, so rather than doing this every time I, I read read data in, right? I might do this inside of my my function here, right? So I might say uh, data dot read strip strip off that data, right? I also one thing I like to do is in case this is a Windows. Uh, text file windows new line characters generally tend to be a carriage return and then a new line instead of Unix style which is just the new line and that can cause uh, a lot of problems sometimes if you're not aware of that so I always do something like this dot replace and then I'm gonna replace the carriage return with nothing with the empty string okay so this is basically what I do every single time I, I read a file now I want to touch on this real quick. This is, generally speaking, uh, a pretty elementary way of reading a file. If you were going to do this uh, in a more advanced way, you use uh, with open. Right. So with this as f, and then here you would say data equals all of this. Okay, so these three lines of code are effectively equivalent as this line of code, except I have to say data equals. What's the difference? Well, the with operator allows you to specify when you when you perform some operation, it allows you to specify what is supposed to be done after that operation has taken place. Okay, so what has to be done whenever you open a file is you need to close the file. So with allows you to do this automatically so you don't accidentally ever forget to close the file. So this is most most of the time the way you'll see uh, this, but this is sort of advanced syntax, okay? So this is the proper way, all right? But it's equivalent to this, all right? So let's go ahead and just use the proper way. All right, so with our data, we're gonna read in the, the data as F, so that's our file. We're gonna say file.read and then strip that text, so any white space on that text, and then replace any carriage returns with blank. And then that's the data, then we'll just return that data. All right, so that's a simple function. Now we run this again, and notice when we ran it last time, we did have this new line character here. And so that has gone away. All right, so this is still not usable. This is just one, one big string, right? Uh, so that's fine for just a general file, but if we want to, to use this in some way, uh, let's say we want to make a checklist and, and have um, perhaps a dictionary of false values, and then once we purchase the item, we would set them to true or something like this. So maybe this program goes online and orders the thing automatically, and then once it does, it sets this data to true or something like that. So what we want to do is <coughs> we, we can say um, our, our grocery list is going to be data dot split. So we want to split over the new line character. So the split function is going to take this new line character and it's going to create a list of all of the items and that new line character is going to be the separator. So that that's what determines uh, the end of one item. So this is going to be the first item in the list. As soon as we see a new line character, then that gets added to the list. Then we scan again until we see another new line character, and then that gets added to the list. Okay, so these new line characters separate up the object into a list. All right, so let's see what, what this gives us. Okay, so now this is a this is a data structure that's a little bit more useful. 
Now we notice we don't really need these first two items. That's not actually part of the grocery list. That's just sort of metadata. That's, that's something in the file that's not particularly useful. If I was just looking at the file directly, it might be helpful. So when I look at this, I'm like, okay, yes, this is my grocery list. Right? I could also look at the name of the file to know that it's a grocery list, but um, that's fine. So what we want to do is we want to strip those off, right? So we don't need those first two lines. So I can take a slice of this list and I'm going to go from slice two to the end of the list. And that should strip off those first two items. And so glist now should not have these two items and this should just be a list of what I have on my actual grocery list. Okay, so that's nice. So this still isn't, this is a more useful uh, data structure so I can use this in programming better than just a big blob of text but what if I wanted to make a checklist and I wanted a dictionary of these items and I wanted to uh, have you know a default value of false meaning I haven't purchased that item and then as I purchase those items uh, I will I will make that true right so we could do that fairly easily so let's uh, make a dictionary we'll call this g dict and an empty dictionary is made with curly braces and I can say for item in G list so that's my grocery list I can say G dict item All right so this is going to iterate through my G list, item is going to become each of the uh, individual items in the G list one at a time. And each time, so item is the first item in the list, the first time through this loop. And we are setting the key as the item, right? So that's the string value. So eggs, milk, or avocado, etc. That's going to be the key. And then the value is false, right? So I can print out uh, our dictionary. X false, milk false, right? So I haven't purchased those items. So then I can go through and purchase those items and as I purchase them, I can set it to true or uh, something else or, or maybe if they're out, I can say that, that they were out of those items, right? And when I get, when I get done, I'll have a list of items um, with, with data. Was I able to actually purchase all of the items that I wanted, right? So you have some, some function that would, that would purchase these items or whatever, right? But the point is I now have a usable data structure. Uh, these values are uh, g underscore dict is a much more useful data structure in my program than just a blob of text. Okay, so this is something that's very common in computer science, where you have some file filled with data, and this is a particular format, right? This is sort of arbitrary. How, who, whoever decide, uh, decided to make this grocery list, they just came up with this protocol, right? This isn't standard. We don't see a whole bunch of text files that use this. There's a title up here, and then a bunch of hyphens or whatever. But looking at this, we know what the user is doing because um, you know, we're, we're intelligent human beings and we can, um, you know, make educated guesses about what's happening, right? The computer is unable to make educated guesses, right? Well, unless you're using advanced techniques like neural networks and that sort of thing, right? So the computer for the most part is stupid. We have to tell it exactly what to do. And so since we're able to determine what's going on here, you know, we specify all of that here in our testing code. All right, so this is sort of our first test. Uh, with, and this is just reading basic basic data. So this is going to be, you know, test one. All right, now let's do a second test. This is going to be test two, and we're going to look at slightly modified grocery list. Okay, so this is sort of the same sort of idea here, uh, except we have more information now, right? We have the same items, but, but now we're specifying uh, a quantity and then also a unit, right? So if I have eggs, one, you know, what's the unit? Is it one egg? No, it's one dozen, right? If I have milk, what's, what do I, uh, how many do I want? I want one. What's one milk? Well, it's one gallon. I'm specifying the unit. So there's really three pieces of information for each one of these values, okay? So you can think of each one of these being a record of information and the column is associated with the label of the item right so this first column is the label the second column here is the quantity right but some of them don't have that 
like avocado. So we're going to have to just assume that means one, right? We have to make some assumption, right? And bananas, there's no, there's no quantity there, right? So that just, we're probably going to have to say that's one unit, whatever that means. Most of the time, someone would assume that that's one bunch, right? But, but we don't have that information to be sure. So we're going to have to fill that in. All right. So this is going to be the same sort of process, except when we parse this data, we have to decide we've taken a look at the data and we need to see what that looks like. So we see that the first item here on this line is the title, but then we need to split that over this, this space hyphen space. And then we have a number and then split that over a space and then you have between those two you have a quantity and a unit now if you don't have this thing we're, let's just assume that the quantity is one and we'll have a generic unit so we would say that this would be like one unit so th this is going to be our default this is what we're going to assume if there's no value okay so notice this is a slightly more complex data this is a really simple example of data and we, we can we organize this into a simple data structure to use now this is more complex and it's it we have more information right and so if we're going to use this information we need to parse it in a usable way in, in Python for example you know these numbers need to be converted to integers right if we wanted to do something interesting like add them up or, or compare you know this value to how many gallons we have and how many gallons we need and that sort of thing right so in order to do something interesting with this data we have to make sure it's in the right type in a data structure that we can use this is all extremely common in computer science so this is one of probably the most useful skills to have is to be able to uh, look at a data file look at how it's organized and parse that data into a, a usable data structure okay this is something every computer scientist needs to know how to do. All right, so let's, let's again, we're going to test our read file, um, and we're going to get some data. But this time, it's going to be grocery 2. All right, and we can print that out. And this is just a text blob. Uh, if I can spell it right. So this is a text blob. So this is our this is exactly what was in the file. That's what we would expect, right? So let's do sort of the same stuff. Um, we're going to split that over the new line character. That's going to give us all of these items in a list, right? And then we want to remove these first two. That's fine. So we can do that with the slicing syntax we're gonna start at slice 2 and leave this blank and that means go to the end of the list so now our data should just be the list of items now what we have to do here is we have to eat for each one of these we have to parse this into uh, three separate values right so what we're gonna need to do is run some sort of loop and there's more advanced ways to do this. I'm going to use the simplest loot possible to reach the largest audience here. But uh, let's say we have our our grocery uh, list dictionary, right? Now this is going to be a little bit different because uh, instead of just having true or false value, right? We have uh, a quantity and a unit. So this is our dictionary is going to look something like this. So it's going to be the you know item name, right? And then we're going to have this is going to be a dictionary of dictionaries. We have a quantity, and so that might be one or two or however many. And then we have a unit, and that could be. Uh, by default, it's just going to say unit if one's not provided, or it could be something like, you know, bunch, like a banana bunch, right? Or a dozen. Right? Alternatively, instead of a dictionary, we could have a list of dictionaries, and then it could be something like this. Uh, and this could be, you know, X. Right, so the point being is there's lots of different ways we can organize this data structure. 
right? Initially, the idea was a dictionary of dictionaries. Now this is a list of dictionaries. So that's something you have to decide on your own. What makes sense for your data? What do you want to do here? All right, so uh, in this case, let's just do a list because that kind of matches what we did up here. This is a list and each list has a dictionary. It has dictionary keys, item, quantity, and unit. Now these three uh, values here, we got that from the way the data was structured. We have the item, we have the quantity, and we have the unit. All right, so that comes just from looking at the data and deciding what these columns are, because the data itself doesn't tell us what those columns are. All right, so let's look at this and, and see if we can parse it into you know this sort of style. So so we're gonna we're gonna comment this out just so we can look at it. But this is sort of what we want to end up with is is an array or a list of these dictionaries. All right, so how can we do that? We can say uh, So this is actually going to be a list, so G list for item in uh, data. We want to say, uh, we want to create a dictionary that's empty. But what we have to do is we still have to parse this data, right? Remember, when we look at this, there's actually three things. Item is one of these. Items. The first item is this entire string, but this entire string is really three bits of or three um, chunks of information that are important, right? So we have to sort of parse that out, right? So we can say uh, <clears throat> we'll make a quick little list here, and we'll say uh, item dot split, and if we split this over space hyphen space. Okay, that is going to, we're splitting over space hyphen space. So that's going to make this the first item in the list and this the second item in the list. And there are no more of these. So that's all that's going to be in the list. If we had multiple uh, space hyphen spaces in this string, you know, those would separate all of the elements of the list. Since there's only one, that means we're only going to have two elements in our list, eggs and one dozen. All right. So we can test this and we can print out, you know, this, this little list. So let's do that. Okay, sure enough, it has split eggs and then one dozen, milk and then one gallon, etc. So uh, a sort of fancier way of uh, assigning, instead of assigning this just to one list, since we know there's going to be, you know, two items in here, we could do a comma separated list. Uh, we could say... Um, item, comma, and then the rest, right? Now the problem with this is going to be when we get to avocado, right? So there's not guaranteed to be two items in the list. This would work for these, but once I try to assign, this is going to take the first item in the list and store it as item, and then the second item in this list and store it as rest, right? But the problem here is that it won't work for avocado. We need to print item and rest. Okay, not enough values to unpack, right? Notice this one worked fine, this one worked fine, but once we got to avocado, there weren't two items in this list, so I can't assign two values here, right? So this, this won't work. We're going to have to have this li value. Okay, so we know that the first value in our list is the item. And we can we can print that out and that should work for all of our values in the list cuz every one of these values in the list has the item name, right? Some of them just don't have the quantity and the unit. All right? So what we can do is we want to set a default quantity. So we can say Quantity by default is one, and then unit by default we'll say is just unit. All right, and then what we can say is if the length of li. So remember, this is this is the result from splitting over uh, space hyphen space. If the result, if the length of that list 
is greater than one, that means we have a second item. And if we have a second item, just from looking at the data, we know, let's see, grocery two, we know that second item takes this format, right? Okay, so that means that could give us a quantity uh, and a unit. So we can say quantity comma unit is gonna equal li one, right? So li zero is that first element. Remember indexing starts at zero uh, for an array. So the item name is that first element. And then when we select this second element at index one, right? That is going to be you know, this string here, right? So what we want to do is we want to split that string over the space character, right? Because if we split over the space character, that's going to give us t a list of two items. The first item is going to be sort of the quantity, and then the second item is going to be the unit. And then one last thing, we might want to convert this quantity into an actual integer, right? So um, we could say qty equals int qty. And again, we're just doing this because we looked at the data and we know what to expect, all right? Now there could be, you know, if you have hundreds and thousands of items, you would have to be a little bit more careful about how you parse this data, all right? But if we look at this, this should be good enough for our use cases and here we can print um, let's do a little f string we can say item uh, and we can say quantity and then we could say unit for each one of these now notice we only actually parse the quantity and unit off of this one when we know we have enough values to do that, right? Because when we initially split over the hyphen, some of those values, uh, you know, sometimes those values are blank, right? So we have to have a default in those cases. So this is the default. We set our default first, and then we check to see if we have that data. And if we do, we change those defaults, right, to the appropriate values. All right, so item eggs, quantity one, unit dozen. Item milk, quantity one, unit gallon. Item one, avocado, quantity. Now, now these are defaults because there, there was not any quantity or uh, unit specified, okay? But again, this is just us looking at the data and figuring out what the protocol is. You know, this person designed this grocery list and it's not a standard. You can't look up the standard of this is supposed to be how grocery lists are made, right? You know, they just arbitrarily made up this system, but it's, it's fairly obvious to, for, for us to look at it and understand what's going on. If we can do that, then we can tell the computer how to do that, right? So this is sort of test two. We, and, and to finish up, we want to make a dictionary out of this stuff, right? So we would say glist.append, and we're going to make a dictionary. So we have curly braces, and our dictionary is going to be the item name, and that's just item. And then we have the quantity, QTY, and that's just QTY. And then we would have the unit. And that is what's stored in our unit variable. Okay, and at the end of this for loop, I can print out this uh, G list. And you can see at the end of this, we now have a much more usable data structure, right? This is much more useful in computer science than a blob of text that just has this stuff in it, right? Now I can, I can search this array. I can, uh, if I have one of these, I can tell how, how many I wanna get, uh, what unit we're talking about, what the name of the item is. This is a much more computationally useful data structure, all right? Now again, we just did this by looking at the file and figuring out how this, how this file is organized, right? Okay, so that's test two. Let's take a look at a third test. And this is sort of the same idea. This is a grocery list. 
but this is in a different format. This is, in a lot of ways, a nicer format. And this is what's called a CSV file, all right? Uh, comma separated values, okay? Now I just have this labeled as .txt, but really this is much closer to a .csv. And again, CSV is comma separated values, right? And what that means is there's a comma between each of the uh, values that we're talking about. Whereas in grocery list two, I had to look at the data and I had to see, okay, the first delimiter is this space hyphen space, and then the second delimiter was this space. So we had to do a couple of different splits, right? With the CSV file, this is easier because I just have to split over the comma and then I have all the values in one list. Now I still do have an issue here with potentially not having any data, right? But most CSV files uh, won't have that issue. It'll be a requirement for you to add those values, right? Or if they're blank, it will look like this. So this would be the empty string, and then this value would be the empty string, something like that. But we're, we're gonna keep it like this uh, just, just to give us an idea of how to parse this, right? And so we're man manually gonna parse this CSV file. The other thing that the CSV files often have, they don't always have this, but they have labels, okay? So, uh, you know, in, a, in our, our program here, we had to come up with these labels, right? So we had to look at the data, we had to understand the data, and then we had to label it ourselves, right? Because that's, you know, there, there were no labels that said this is the item, there were no labels that said this is the quantity and this is the unit. We just had to intelligently look at the data and, and surmise that for ourselves, right? With a, a CSV file, you don't, there's no guesswork, you know, and not all CSV files have this, but, but most of them do. And it's this, this first line here is the, uh, the units that you're gonna use. And then each one of these is the data. And so eggs is gonna be the item. Milk is gonna be the item, right? Avocado is the item. The quantity is gonna be the second item or, or the second thing in the list separated by commas, right? And then this line is not always in CSV files. So most CSV files are gonna look like this. You have the, the units, and then you have each individual record and it's sort of like columns you look at but sometimes there will be a little bit of metadata about the csv file at the beginning or there might be metadata at the end as well right so ending metadata and metadata just means data about the data so i might have some information about this or where this list came from or something like this and then i might have some you know, something like this. This So I have some metadata at the top that I'm not actually gonna use. I have some metadata at the end that I'm not actually gonna use, but the actual information that I'm interested in in the CSV file is right here. All right, so we're gonna parse this manually. Now a CSV file, that is an actual standard. So these other grocery lists, we just sort of made made up the protocol. We, we sort of made up, you know, what the space hyphen space meant, you know, and we, we made up the entire protocol here. With CSV files, there is a set of rules. Uh, one of them being the first item here uh, is the, uh, it's not always the case, but it can be the, quick, the case that this first row of items separated by commas are the units, and then every uh, line after that is a record of information. Each record of information has a value associated with, with each one of those units. Now again, we do have to be careful because sometimes we don't have data there. All right, so this this will be the um, our third test. So we'll we'll grab this, and this is you know test three. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say data equals uh, read file, and this is going to be grocery.csv grocery three but this is a .csv file, comma, separated values. All right, so we get that data, and we really want to split that over the new lines. And um, we don't want those first two. Well, we'll just print this to start with. Print data. Okay, so we don't want this metadata at the beginning and we don't want this metadata at the end right so we're going to take a slice we don't want those first two items and we don't want those last two items so we're going to go from slice two to slice negative two 
Okay, now this gives us what we're looking for. Now again, we're, we're not quite finished here because this, unlike the other um, lists we were parsing, this is, these are the column names, right? So this is separate, and then each one of these is a record of information. Okay, so we wanna sort of split that out. So we'll call these labels or titles. So labels, that's gonna be the first item in our list. And then the records are gonna be everything else. So this is gonna, we're gonna take off that first item and go to the end of the list. So we can print out labels and then we'll print out records. Okay, so this is one string, and really what we want is a list of these items, right? So I can say labels is split over comma. Now comma is what's called our field separator. It separates the individual fields. So, and, and basically by field, I mean column, right? So this is one field, this is one value, this is one field, one value, and this is one field. So the comma separates the fields. And then a record is a set of those. So this would be one record, right? And the comma is separating the individual fields of that record, okay? So for each one of the records, we also want to split this up into a list. And we wanna split that over the comma, right? So uh, <clears throat> what we can do here is this is, this is a little bit advanced syntax here, but here, this is just gonna give us a list, right? We, we, we see that we have a list of items. And what we can do is go, th go through a for loop here. Yeah, I won't use the advanced syntax, but let's just go through a for loop. And we could say, um, for R in records, We're gonna we're gonna keep a parsed list, and we're gonna say we we need some default values. So our quantity default is one. Our unit default is uh, unit. All right, and then uh, we know we can split this list over the comma, the field separator. So we have this list and we can say r dot split over the comma. This is gonna split the list, or, or split this individual string. So one of these items, it's going to split that over the comma. So in this case, since there's two commas, that means eggs is gonna be the first item in the list, then the string one is gonna be the second item in the list, and then dozen is gonna be the third item in the list. Now again, these will all be strings because we're splitting the string up over this character. All right, so we can we can just start by you know printing li out. This is much like we did in the last one. And sure enough, we have these items, but this avocado one, again, is gonna be the issue, right? So that's why we need these defaults, right? So we can say, you know, uh, item equals li, that first item, because every one of our items in here has a first item, right? And that's gonna be the item name. And then we can say if the length of our list is greater than one, then we can say uh, quantity Uh, and then unit is equal to the remaining items of that list. Okay, the first item in the list is the name. So we've already stored that in the item variable. And then the, the remaining items in the, in the list are gonna be quantity and unit. So we're saving those. All right, but we've got the defaults in case that's, uh, in case we don't have uh, any values there, right? And then the last thing again, we need to convert this to an integer. So QTY equals 
integer version qty. Right, and then we can say parsed dot append, and we're gonna append the items to our dictionary. Uh, quantity, and then unit. And then down here, we can just print out parsed. All right. Um, for our in records, R dot split. Printing our list here. We don't need that. Okay. Oh, we have this down here. That's why. I didn't see that. Okay. So this this is our final product here. And again, we see it's the same as this one. Right, but this this is a little bit easier because we just had to split over the comma and that's it. All right, just split over the comma instead of splitting over two separate. Up here we had to split over two separate delimiters, and, and you know this is just a simple example. But imagine you had lots of columns, right, and hundreds and thousands of records, right. So the CSV file is incredibly useful. And in the next video we're going to go into example data with CSV files that are much more complicated. So this CSV file is a customer ID, is the column name, first name, last name, street ad address, city, state, and zip. So much more, uh, many more columns, and then many more records. If you see here this list, uh, you know, thousands of records, 1500 or so, something like that, right? So that's a lot more data, and we'll see how easy it is to parse this, and we can create one function that will parse all of these different types of CSV files. So this one is month and expenses. So this is a smaller one. Uh, sales tax, this is a smaller one. Uh, products, this is a smaller one, right? But then we have sales, right? An invoice number, customer ID, date. So all of these, if they're in the right format, we can write one function and parse these into usable data structures. And so this is one of the, the, the most common uh, things a computer scientist should know how to do. Uh, almost every computer science employer is going to know, uh, expect you to know how to do something like this. And there are also tools to do this. There are, um, you can import the CS, CSV uh, library to do this for you, but it's important to know sort of what goes into it yourself. And then once you sort of know that, then it's, it's good to use those uh, external libraries. But it's important that you understand sort of what's happening mechanically and how to do it yourself uh, before you use some of those. All right. So we'll go into this in the next video.